Sitaram Yachuri is the General Secretary of the Communist Party of India Marxist. He was a former Rajya Sabha member. Um, of late, he became he came into the news for rather disarming reasons. So there was of course that iconic photograph of uh, Comrade Sitaram reading a letter out to um, in the, before Indira Gandhi at a student, student protest in JNU. And as the right wing would have fantasized it being an apology letter for conducting the strike, it, <laughs> uh, it, it actually uh, was, 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 was more of a, an outrage letter and uh, on account of which she resigned as the vice chancellor the next day from the university. There were those times in well, there were these times in well. Comrade Mohamed Tarigami, who was here earlier in the day, um, uh, Sitaram tried to contact him multiple uh, times. He tried to visit him twice in Srinagar, but of course he was not given permission. And finally, he had to approach the Supreme Court in order to get official permission to go and see him. Priya, so Priya um, Sule, a very dear friend, and uh, one of the fourth, foremost forthcoming politicians in the country. I mean, I shouldn't say forthcoming because she already is one. <laughs> but then, I mean, that is the future of Indian politics and the role that she's playing. But I mean, she's been, I mean, I don't deserve the flattery that she's given me, but uh, <laughs> about that, all that, but that all the part, because we are discussing chronolo our chronology from here. अब इस क्रोनोलॉजी को जैसे डॉक्टर डब्ल्यू एस एड कौन सी क्रोनोलॉजी समझा रहा है क्रोनोलॉजी की बात छोड़िए वो आप आ जाएंगे हम थोड़ी देर में लेकिन व्हाट इज हैपनिंग इन द कंट्री यू हर्ड फ्रॉम सुप्रिया सम सम एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ इट वी हैड द लॉन्गेस्ट बजट स्पीच एवर आई थिंक विदाउट एनीथिंग टू डू विद द बजट एंड यू नो दैट देयर इज एब्सोल्युटली नथिंग वी डोंट नो हाउ मच द गवर्नमेंट हैज अर्न व्हाट इज इट्स रेवेन्यू व्हाट इज इट्स एक्सपेंडिचर्स वेयर इट्स गोइंग टू गो नथिंग ऑफ दैट इज नो व्हिच इज व्हाट द बजट इज सपोज्ड टू बी वेल एनीवे दैट अपार्ट Supriya has given given the minister ten and two for the budget. Chidambaram was asked, <laughs> on a scale of ten, how what would you give? His answer was that thought, I mean, rather classic. He said, ten has two digits. <laughs> It's your pick. You can pick either one of them. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, I mean. What is what is happening to our economy? We have the highest unemployment levels in the last 50 years. Your farmers are continuing to commit distress suicides. Your factories are shutting down. Layoffs are taking place, and the misery of the people. And for once in my life, I was brought up in Hyderabad, and we are used to eating Hyderabadi biryani. This time, when I went to Hyderabad on the way to Gulbarga for a huge big rally. So we ordered biryani, and suddenly I was surprised to find biryani without any onions. I said, "Hey, what happened? You didn't eat any biryani today, right?" So he said, "Yeah, 100 rupees a kilo. This biryani is more than enough." So I said, "Okay, I'll give you this biryani." So I said, "Okay, I'll give you this biryani." So I said, "Okay, I'll give you this biryani." So I said, "Okay, I'll give you this biryani." So I said, "Okay, I'll give you this biryani." So I said, "Okay, I'll give you this Big struggles are going on. The working class has been on on a, a, a nationwide strike. The Gramin Ban, of which Ashok was one of the organizers, coincided with it. The students went on strike in many universities on that day. But absolutely, it just doesn't concern this government at all. And in the last seven months, what is the chronology that they brought? In the last seven months since the return, the only agenda has been an agenda to divide our people, divide our country, and to spread. Both Supriya was saying an atmosphere of hate and violence all across the country, on one pretext or the other. First session of Parliament, Article 370 abrogation, J and K reduced into two union territories, and with the slate of hand, and very very surreptitiously, I mean replacing the will of an elected state assembly with the will of the governor appointed by the centre, because the state assembly was dissolved, and therefore used that as the excuse. Anyway, the Honourable Supreme Court is uh, considering the matter, and we know how they have been considering matters in the recent past. So, 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 so what will come out of it, we don't really know. But anyway, that was the first agenda that created a, a tremendous division and alienation, not only among the Kashmiris but also apprehensions about the largest minority, the religious minority that lives in our country. And then came the Ayodhya verdict. The Supreme Court delivered the verdict. But in our opinion, it did not deliver justice. 
those those who the in the same judge he talks of saying it's a criminal act for those who went and put up the idols there in 1949 but then what what do you do about it nothing those who destroy the babri masjid it was a criminal act what do you do about it nothing but then the disputed land is given to those very people to construct a temple there <coughs> now there are any number of families that are there in that um, verdict but anyway all the political parties had come to an agreement saying that if there is no mutually negotiated settlement between the different um, the parties then we will all accept the court verdict so so be it so that's what it is and then after that comes the ca nrc npr now the, what is the meaning of this whenever we say an no objection to it today at shahin bagh in delhi there's palpable tension some thousands some tens of thousands of people have gathered there in solidarity because the hindu sena gave a call that we are going to violently remove the uh, protest so in order to defend the shahin bagh protesters i mean people have just lined up from all over the place and mostly youngsters and it's very redeeming factor uh, in factor i mean i'm so presently surprised it's like our generation that for the emergency and unfortunately many of you were castigated by people of my age group not me but of my age group saying that your only life is your uh, you know smartphone and your cyberspace and you're not bothered about anything else and what nonsense when I mean, you just look at anywhere in the country today when I mean, more than 200 university campuses have come out spontaneously as an outrage against the ca why because like supriya said you all been brought, born in a free country which had yes there are many faults many limitations many things that have to change and we are all struggling for that better change for the better but it nevertheless was a country which had certain values of secular democracy now today you find that under assault whenever you take an objection to the ca you say you are anti national and you are speaking the language of pakistan pakistan has been the obsession with our prime minister <laughs> and like one student in a cartoon and i think it was very interesting to be sure some of you must have seen it a student fails in an examination so the father blames him say what have you done why you failed he said no no pakistan is the cause <laughs> pakistan <laughs> pakistan failed because of pakistan so Pakis, anyway, okay, we are all Pakistanis. We are all international. We got to tell them. All of us together must tell these. Uh, I mean, people who are now in the government. Then look here. Every religion may have its holy book. Some religions may have more than one holy book, like Hindus have. But as far as an Indian patriot is concerned, there is only one holy book, and that is the Constitution of India. and when i stand up to defend the constitution it is an expression of my patriotism it's not an anti national act but a supremely national act in protecting the secular democratic foundations of modern india as laid down in the constitution and that is why opposing caa is why because for the first time it violates the constitution by linking religion with no i mean with granting of citizenship and that is the supreme violation the rest of the chronology follows and that is the nrc and pr the prime minister thundered saying jab se mai pradhan mantri bana nrc ke bare mein koi charcha nahi hui allah kamal hai sir aapne to kya bataya aapko ki mai rajya sabha mein tha supriya was also there i think no you know that you were there huh? so three months after he became the prime, I mean, prime minister there was a question raised in the rajya sabha on the npr then saying what is this npr about you are having aadhar you are having npr why are you uh, been duplicating everything will be there I mean, that was the question in answer to that the home ministry replies saying that the npr is being conducted which will be the basis for the nrc on the basis of the npr the nrc will be prepared and it is way back in 2014 ten times in parliament it was clarified that the nrc will be on the basis of the npr Then of course, Mr. Amit Shah explained the chronology to all of us, <laughs> and in that chronology, he said first NPR, I mean first CIA, उसके बाद NPR आएगा, 
उसके आधार पर एनआरसी बनेगी और जिन जिन के नाम नहीं होंगे एनआरसी में इन घुसपैठियों को हम जो है बगा बगा कर ले जाएंगे और उनको देश से बाहर कर देंगे द लॉजिक ऑफ द टर्म आइट्स द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ द टर्म आइट्स आई कम टू इट व्हेन वेयर डज द लॉजिक कम फ्रॉम सो द एनपीआर इज द वन वेयर दे यू आर नॉट गोइंग टू बी टोल्ड टू फिल एनी फॉर्म्स एन्यूमरेटर विल कम आस्क यू क्वेश्चंस नोट डाउन योर आंसर्स and then one registrar who will be appointed by the government will decide whether your answers are genuine or not and if you if he thinks they are not genuine then you mark this d d category that is doubtful citizenship nrc all the d category names will not be there so they won't do any nrc there's no need once npr is done there's no need of nrc because those who are left out are the doubtful people will be left out of the nrc so that is where If you want your name to be entered into the NRC, you will have to go around producing your documents. That's why I say when NPR, when they come to ask you the question, they come to ask you the question along with the census. Answer the census questions, but not the NPR. You know the census questions what they are because they'll be circulated. And other than that, don't answer any questions. Jawab bin denge NPR ke liye, NRC ke liye kaagas bin dikhaiye, and that is that would be this logo. So the basis of which we have to work. and that is where this entire process comes in of dividing that these termites are the ones that have to be thrown out of the country and who are the termites all of us know they non except for the muslim minorities termites should be thrown out and in order to justify that they made the poor president of india yesterday or day before yesterday read out a speech prepared by the cabinet where where he reads Uh, where he reads out the text prepared by the cabinet, where he quotes Mahatma Gandhi, and says, "We are doing CAA is exactly what Mahatma wanted us to do." <laughs> and and they quote Mahatma Gandhi, and here I have the actual quotation from the the prayer address that Mahatma Gandhi gives in 1940 uh, in 1947, 48, the beginning of 48, where the entire quotation is completely different and is a completely fabricated quotation i can read out here it says hindus and sikhs what they they claim mahatma said hindus and sikhs of pakistan who do not want to, who do not wish to live there can come to india it is the duty of the government of india to ensure a normal life for them unquote what does gandhi ji say if we regard all the muslims as fifth columnists Will not the Hindus and the Sikhs in Pakistan also be considered fifth columnists? That would not do. The Hindus and Sikhs staying there can come here by all means, if they do not wish to continue staying there. In that case, it is the first duty of the Indian government to give them jobs and make their lives comfortable. But they cannot continue to stay there and become petty spies and work for us and not for Pakistan. See the meaning, the difference between between what uh, Gandhi ji said and what the government is interpreting. And then, what does Gandhi ji go on to say? The Muslims have said they would be loyal to India. Let us trust them with all our heart. Let us remember the truth alone triumphs, never the untruth. Unquote. So this is asking us to trust the Muslims, and that is why the Muslims who have chosen a larger number than the population of Pakistan then. to stay back in the country chose because yahi par unki paidashi hui yahi par wo dafan hona chahte hain yahi unka vatan hai and to them you are raising a question i mean a question mark of patriotism and say they are they are enemies or traitors of the country are we have to explain to amit shah saab and to the prime minister jab hum 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 ki baat karte hain hamara desh hamara bharat hum ye hum ka matlab kya hai हिंदू का ह और मुसलमान का म ये दोनों जब मिलता है तभी हम बनता है तभी हम देख सकते तभी अपना भारत भारत बनता है एंड दिस इज व्हाट दे वांट टू डिस्ट्रॉय इट फॉर बिकॉज दिस इज पार्ट ऑफ ए विजन पीपल वर आस्किंग इंक्लूडिंग सुप्रिया वाज आस्किंग नाउ व्हेन इमरजेंसी कंपैरिजन टू इमरजेंसी एंड नाउ आई सेड दिस इज वर्स देन इमरजेंसी The reason why I'm saying that is, in emergency, at least had people who are political leaders who are associated with the freedom movement. 
Today, for the first time, you have a set of people who have got nothing to do with the freedom movement, in fact, had actually not participated in the freedom movement, even if they were alive, which belonged to that stream. Through the freedom movement, the three streams of visions emerged. The first, or the, the one, was the dominant vision, that of the Congress leadership then, and correctly. The country of our diversity cannot be kept united. And people can't be kept united unless we have a, a secular democratic political structure. Correct. But the communists on the left then said, but we cannot stop there. You'll have to proceed to convert the political independence of our country into the economic independence of our people, which is what Bhagat Singh was also talking about. And to convert that, you'll have to start moving towards socialism. That's why many aspects in the constitution on uh, on the question of economic uh, self-reliance, etc., etc., all of this were brought in. These were two visions, not antagonistic, but differing. A third antagonistic vision was born, which had a twin expression, that the character of independent India would be determined by the religious affiliation of its people. And from this emerged the two-nation theory. The first votary of the two-nation theory was Vinayak Damodar Savarkar, who more than a year before, as the president of the Hindu Mahasabha then, Savarkar had said, in India there exist two nations, a Muslim nation and a Hindu nation. A year or a year and a half later, the president of the Muslim League, Jinnah, in his presidential address says, I agree with Savarkar, there are two nations, an Islamic nation and a Muslim nation. And the two nation theory unfortunately led to the partition of the country. The problem that came up is that if they could have an Islamic nation in Pakistan, why are we not a Hindu Rash of the RSS variety? But the leadership of our national movement refused that they said recognizing India's reality and diversity, they said it can only be a secular democratic republic. And it was that re rejection of that Hindu Rashtra thing was the was found expression in the assassination of Mahatma Gandhi. And that is where the, the thing got it, but then the issue didn't stop there. Since then till now, the relentless effort is to convert the secular democratic republic into their rapidly intolerant, theocratic, fascistic vision of a Hindutva Rashtra as it exists today. And that is the battle that is unfolding today. So these are not isolated incidents, CAA, 370, Ayodhya, or for that matter, all this here uh, about the atmosphere of hate and violence, etc. So all this is part of the larger jigsaw puzzle. And in that larger jigsaw puzzle, we will have to uh, understand that this is happening. And unless all of us come together and fight it out. And Supriya is right. It's not a question of political parties alone. It's not a question of electoral alliances. It's a question of people's unity. Now, that is what is happening today. Wherever you go, at least at this point of time, there will be at least more than 50 places in our country where protests are taking place against the CAA, NRC and the NPR. And what is the symbol? The tricolor. What is the, uh, uh, what is the place they are taking? The preamble of the constitution. And it is this youth who is now dra drawing upon this to safeguard the fundamental foundations of our republic. That is under assault. So it's just not a question of government delivering or being efficient, but of what vision is this government moving? And in order to elicit international support for what they're doing, saying this is an internal matter, they're willing to offer for sale everything that is our national asset. Everything. It started sometime earlier when I said that, that you have, Prime Minister was there that day in the house when I was speaking once. And I said, uh, sir, you are creating history because you have given a new slogan to India. Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose had given us the slogan of Jai Hind. That day, the Prime Minister appeared on a coloured advertisement in all the front pages of things, launching the Geo, Geo, uh, I mean, you know, the telecommunication company. So I said, from Jai Hind, you are converting India into Geo Hind. And, 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 and that, that is what is today happening, if no other network is working properly, as well as the geo does. But it's not only, really, that's only symbolic. But selling off your national assets to both Indian corporates and to the others, when the actual solution is what? It's giving all this 
concessions to the corporates. When 1% of India's wealthy controls four times the assets of four times the assets of the bottom 70% of our population. This is the Indian reality. And so giving more concessions, use those monies for public investment, build our infrastructure, create jobs, and when our youth start spending their wages, then the closed factories will start opening up because demand will rise. The solution is there. But that's not the direction in which you go. So the point right now is that the chronology, if you want to understand, the chronology is step by step to undermine this secular democratic constitution. And that is the chronology that is happening in the last seven months, 370, Ayodhya, now CAA, now the NPR will begin the 1st of April. And that is where, what is the, how, do we, how do we face up to this? And to face up to this, the only way is a Gandhian civil disobedience movement. And that is exactly what is happening today. If you look at all these protest sites, there are no political leaders leading them. I am glad there are no political leaders. And who Modi, I mean, I mean, somebody commented from the, their side, saying that this left party or Congress party or this secular party, these are all bhadka rahe So I said, we don't have to increase any bhadka rahe loon. And we don't have to increase any leadership rahe loon. We are going to be behind the non-jawana ki piche piche chal rahe, all the political parties. They are the ones who are taking the lead in the media. And all, and all strength to all of you in doing that. Because you are the modern sepais of uh, modern India. You are India's future. What will be the future of India is what you will decide. So it is now the task for all of us to, to, to abolish this language of talking in terms of termites or guspetia and things like that. And abolish this talk of hatred and divisions that are there between, between us and to unite. And that is where you find in these protests the unity that is emerged between the Muslims and the non-Muslims. Non I mean, both Amit Shah and uh, our Modi keep saying that this is only Muslim and Muslims are protesting. Absolutely ridiculous. I mean, if you go and look at any any one of these protests, actually. And therefore, the, they are faced up to assaults, they are faced up to police repression, they are faced up to attacks. The police now acting at their behest, only place violence has taken place are the BJP rule states at Delhi where the, the police is under the BJP. Nowhere else has there been any violence. So the peaceful protests and that is what we'll have to, uh, we'll have to carry forward and is exactly how it happened during the national movement. Gandhiji would give a call, there'd be no leadership mobilizing anywhere. People would respond on their own and then that would become the national movement. And that is what we are seeing today. And that is what has to be strengthened. And that is why issues like uh, the Mumbai uh, 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 men, collective, Mumbai collective, and the various uh, sort of people that are all coming together today from different points of view, different walks of life. And what has happened in Mumbai, what was unheard of some time ago to have a non-BJP government with an ally of the BJP sitting with Supriya, and then both of them forming and forming that government. I mean, it has been a sense of liberation. I mean, your Bollywood tells us that but for the fact that there is no BJP in the government today, the protests wouldn't have happened in Bombay the way they are happening. I mean, that sense of relief, you just imagine if it can happen to you here, what would be the sense of relief in the country when you are able to succeed in doing this? And, and that is, and that is, that is, that is what and we will we'll have to move towards. That is why we'll have to say firmly. And that's why the last, I'd like to end with just asking you to respond to his slogan. The thing we'll have to say very clearly is we are determined. We are not violent. We are peacefully protesting our fundamental right. We'll continue to protest. For NPR, we will not give up. For NRC, we will not give up. That will be our call. And that is what we'll have to mobilize. And then the slogan we'll have to give is Modi Shah Sabhan. हम बचाएंगे संविधान। तो तो प्लीज जॉइन मी इन गिविंग दिस लोगों। मोदी शाह सावधान।
बोधि शाह सावधान बोधि शाह सावधान